Nico Steves here. This podcast is the first of a two-part story focused on Our Lady of the Sign. But first, segments from the audiobook version of The Very Fine Light. Chapter 17. Mikey had come in at 5.10 a.m. per Chef Joe's request. This early arrival allowed enough time so that Mikey could get the water boiling in three giant steam kettles that Chef Joe would need to start making oatmeal, cream of wheat, and hard-boiled eggs for the elderly care residents and staff breakfasts. Chef Joe stormed in and glanced around the kitchen to see if everything was up and running. Seeing things in order, he gave Mikey an approving nod. Mikey breathed out a sigh of relief, then smiled. It's a mess out there, Chef Joe yelled. Is the snow still coming down? Mikey asked. "Uh, Yeah, I've never seen anything like it. And there sits the snowplow while my mom is out somewhere on ambulance duty, Chef Joe barked back. Startled, Mikey now asked, Got anything else for me to do? Nah, that's it for now. I'm going outside to take a look-see, Mikey said. Chef Joe tore open a 50-pound sack of oatmeal as Mikey walked out of the kitchen. The burly cook hoisted the heavy sack onto his shoulders and began dumping the contents into one of the giant kettles of boiling water. Hey, grab me one of those wooden spoons so I can stir this. He looked over to where Mikey had been standing, but the teen had disappeared. As Mikey opened the side door, an avalanche of wet snow fell on him. Petros had just come over from the street and laughed in spite of himself. Mikey pulled off his knit cap and hastily began brushing his snowy shoulders with it. This wet stuff is crazy, Mikey fumed. At the same time, Julie climbed up the village hall front stairs and started shaking her ice-caked umbrella vigorously. Almost at the same time, Mikey, Julie, and Petros turned to look at the snowplow. It was buried under a growing buildup of slurry that had begun turning into ice. Julie shouted, Where's Randy? Mikey and Petro shook their heads. Did you come to help him today, Mikey? She asked, dusting the wet slush from the lapels of her coat. Not really. I've been getting the kettles boiling in the kitchen for Chef Joe, Mikey yelled from where he and Petro stood. But I'm happy to help. He really needs to have been here by now, Julie snapped. Maybe Randy got stuck on the way in, Mikey said hopefully. How much fuel were you able to get yesterday afternoon? Uh, well, I, I had to get on to school, he nervously replied. You needed to have followed up before you left work. Mikey sensed the disappointment in her voice. I'm really sorry, Mikey apologized. Julie glared at Mikey and then warned. So long as he's got enough fuel to get the main roadways plowed. Petros felt uneasy at her comment as he pulled up his collar to protect himself against a strong gust. He and Mikey started walking towards the front porch. Mikey, take Mr. Petros to the kitchen and get him a cup of coffee. Looking at Petros, Julie said, You go inside with Mikey and wait. Randall Sparks should be here soon. Don't worry, the cup of coffee is on the house. Petros nodded. Julie pulled out her cell phone to see if Randy had called. Follow me, Mr. Petros, Mikey said in a worried tone as they walked back to the side door. Julie shook her head. I'm going to have to call Jakey in from retirement. He's just down the street. At least I can rely on him to be responsible. He mentored Randy, and maybe after seeing Jake at the wheel, Randall will get a piece of the old curmudgeon's mind. Petros had a different concern. They keep calling me Mr. Petros. How can I sort it out before they all think that's my last name? And Mikey felt worried, too. What if Randy didn't get enough fuel. And now, on to part two of this podcast. Welcome to part two in the story of the apparition known as Our Lady of the Sign, which happened in the year 1170 AD on my timeline of the history of the Virgin Mary since she passed on from the earth. We continue with the story about the coarse root icon. And so we move forward to the year 1295 after Christ's death. Just over a century had passed since the miracle of the icon Our Lady of the Sign, but much has happened 
in the other nearby territories that had been under continual attacks by the feared Mongolian Tartars. The results include the destruction of many areas of territories in what is part of Russia today. So successful were these incursions and various battles that they had turned the city of Korst and its surrounding areas back into wilderness. If it can be imagined, gone were the people of the region with its key city of Korst returned into a forest once again. The only visitors to the abandoned area became hunters from other regions who would journey to the site to the abandoned countryside to hunt wild animals. One day, September 8th in the year 1295, a hunter was going along the banks of the river, not very far from the ruined city, when he noticed the outline of what he thought could be an icon laying face down on the ground, buried under vines and next to the root of a tree. The hunter carefully pulled the vines and, upon turning the icon over, found that it looked like Our Lady. And he immediately recognized that the image painted on the wooden icon reminded him of none other than the icon Our Lady of the Sign, which was enshrined and venerated in the Novgorod Republic. And so he moved the icon that had been laying on the root, and the first miracle occurred. Immediately at the spot, a spring of pure water sprang up with great force. People from his village, which had been spared from the Tartar onslaught, started coming to see this icon and miracles began to occur there. The hunter built a small wooden chapel there and put the miraculous image of the Mother of God there. Many villagers from his city of Hrosk visited the chapel to venerate the icon and pray about their sorrows and needs. Known now as the coursed root icon, there the mother of God healed all who came to her icon. Now the prince of the city heard about the icon and had it brought back to the city, but he didn't go to pick it up himself, and he was punished with blindness. Well, he quickly repented, received his sight back, and moved by his miracle, the prince constructed in her honor a church, the Nativity of the All-Holy Theotokos, or Mother of God. And there in his city, the icon was enshrined. However, the icon miraculously returned to its original location by the root in the tree. Try as the prince might to bring the icon back to the church he had built, it kept returning back to Korst again and again. Finally, they realized that was where the icon wished to be. In the year 1383, the providence of Korst was subject to a new invasion of Tartars. They tried to set fire to the chapel, but it refused to burn. So they cut the icon in two and tossed the pieces aside. The chapel was then able to be burned to the ground. The monk who had resided at this burnt chapel was captured, but eventually was able to return after a number of years. He looked, and he was able to retrieve the pieces. Upon putting them together, they miraculously grew back, though the cracks from where it was broken remained, along with a soft dew-like substance. The icon, now known as the coarsed root icon, remained there for 200 years afterwards. And around that time, a monastery was built above the spring called the Korst Root Hermitage. Over time, it became a Russian Our Lady of Lords with its healing springs where the Mother of God had originally appeared in the form of the icon. Plus, the grounds included seven other miracle-working springs on the lower side of the site. And there were many, many other examples of miracles of the Virgin Mary through the coarsed root icon. Here are some highlights of what happened more recently. During the Russian Revolution, the icon left its home and spent many years of temporary stops during those communist times. And also the monastery itself was closed in the 1920s. The buildings were used as a technical school 
during which time the government tried unsuccessfully to restrict access to the spring, including guard dogs and a cement cap, but it seeped water from the spring. Also, the hermitage was greatly neglected during the years of the Soviet Union. In the 1950s, the icon found a home in New York. After the fall of the Soviet regime, a copy of the coursed root icon once again was allowed to be venerated in her original home. The once famous annual pilgrimages started once again with the first new procession in 1990. In 2005, for example, this one-day procession of the coursed root icon attracted 30,000 pilgrims. And so ends this two-part story of the icon of Our Lady of the Sign and the coursed root icon. Well, this is Nico Steves. I hope you enjoyed this installment. My book, The Very Fine Light, can be found using the title The Very Fine Light on Amazon.com. Please feel free to contact me at nicosteves.com. That's N-I-K-O-S Steves, S-T-E-V-E-S, dot com. If you like this episode and for more, share them with friends. This is Nico Steves. Thank you. See you next time.